Noah and Christ compared. What do you mean by that? You might be saying, yes, Noah is a type and a picture of Jesus Christ, and the ark is as well, because when we abide in Jesus, we are saved. And there's an amazing thing, because the 17th day of of the seventh month, which is also became the first month after Passover, right? Of the Jewish calendar was three days after Passover, three days after Passover. When was that? That was resurrection day, the Jesus that day that Jesus was raised from the dead. And that was the same day, the same day of the year, the date that the ark rested upon the mountaintop and it was a whole new world. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, you might want to hit that button and the bell. We're doing a series right now, Jesus in the Old Testament. You won't miss anything. Check out the former videos as well, the the last ones, and comment with your questions or any comments. I love to respond to those, and I love to see them. So let's get into this presentation, you guys. It's so exciting. All right, so Noah and Christ compared, right? Well, there was a flood. It was on the whole face of the earth. We know that. The ark was floating above that. And we know that this was even recorded in secular history. Like if you go to all the major cultures all over the world in every continent, if you go back, back far enough, there is a historical record of a worldwide flood. So I'm not making this up. Do your own research. It's an amazing thing, you guys. All right. So there was this flood, right? And God gave Noah these dimensions for this ark, and they were perfect dimensions. Did you know that? That ships even today use that same formula, that same ratio to build. It's three stories high. We know that. And it is 1,500,000 cubic feet of space inside of the ark. And we also know that uh, that 552 railroad carts can fit inside of this, which gives you enough space. Many experts have figured this out, but it gives you enough space to put all of the animals in, two by two, all of the animals and all of the food that they would need and water. And, and that would only take up 60% of the space inside of the ark. So there's 40% of space left over. So God had this perfect plan, and there was even windows around the top of the ark that had for ventilation, and, uh, you know, it's just an amazing thing that this, God had Noah build this before there was any of this engineering for these huge vessels like this. And we know that Genesis chapter 8 verse 4 says, Then in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the ark rested. So the seventh month was turned into the first month when Moses was there and God had him, right before Passover, God had him change that to the seventh month becoming the first month. So the 17th day was three days after Passover. Passover is the day that Jesus died on the cross. Three days later, he raised from the dead. And it's the same day the ark rested on the mountaintop. And Noah's name, what does it mean? Rest. Let's look into this, guys. This is so fun. All right. It rested, rested upon the mountains of Ararat, the Bible says. What does Ararat mean? Ararat means cursed. The curse is reversed. What did Jesus do on the cross, you guys? He reversed the curse. There's no more curse for us because of what Jesus did. Paul made that very clear in Romans that Jesus reversed it and that Adam was a type of Christ. I did an episode on that. You might want to check that out. You could see it right here if you want to click on that. But Adam being a type of Christ, it was a contrast in comparison. The contrast was that he caused death because of his sin. Death came to all of us. But because of Jesus's obedience at a tree, just like Adam was at the tree, the curse was reversed. And here we're seeing that in Noah's story as well, because the mountain that the ark rested upon, Noah's name means comfort and rest, the reverse cursed. The curse is now (laughs) reversed. Isn't that awesome? And it was a whole new world, a new beginning, 
and it was Noah and his family. Genesis chapter 5 tells us, and he named him Noah, saying, this one will give us comfort from our work comfort from our work and from the hard labor of our hands caused by the ground which the Lord has cursed. But what does Ararat mean? The curse is reversed, right? And here's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So what does it mean? These, this, we looked at a, a former episode. You might want to check that one out. Jesus and the genealogy of Genesis chapter 5. Adam's name means man. Seth's name means appointed. Enosh's name means mortal. Kenan's name means sorrow. Mahalalel, the blessed God. Jared means shall come down. Enoch means teaching. Methuselah, his death shall bring. Lamech, the despairing. Noah, comfort and rest. So what does that mean? Man appointed moral sorrow. The blessed God. God shall come down teaching his death shall bring the despairing comfort and rest. What did Jesus just say in that scripture? Come to me, all of you who are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What did Jesus do? He reversed the curse. And what is he going to bring someday? A whole new world. It's going to be beautiful. He's going to restore the planet. In fact, the Bible says that all creation is groaning, waiting for the coming of the Lord and for the saints as well. And everything will be restored before the curse, before Adam and Eve sin. It's going to go back to that beautiful garden. I'm so excited about that, aren't you? It's going to be awesome, you guys. Can't wait for that to happen. So let's let's continue on here. So the ark rested on the mountaintop named Ararat, which means the curse is reversed. And when did it land on the mountaintop? The 17th day of the month, three days after Passover, the very day that Jesus rose from the dead, three days after Passover. 32, so let's look at this, three days after Passover, 32 AD. We know that in Luke chapter 24, there was two men on their way to Emmaus, a village about seven miles from Jerusalem. And as they walked along on that, it says in the Bible that the Jesus said to them, these are my words, which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all the things that are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. That's the whole Tanakh, you guys. If you're Jewish, you know it starts with the books of Moses, the Torah, the prophets, right? And then what? What's the last thing? The Ketuvim, which are the Psalms, right? If you haven't subscribed yet, again, you might want to hit that subscribe button down below, hit the bell, leave your questions, leave your comments. I'd love to interact with you on that stuff. And if you don't have comfort and if you don't have rest, my friend, if you don't know Jesus, you could know him. He is a simple prayer way. You may be feeling something in your heart right now that you don't know if you're saved. You don't know if you've been born again and you belong to him. Would you like to belong to him? Would you like to abide in Jesus? It'd be like a, his aboding place, being in the ark, so to speak. Safe, safe and secure in his arms. That's what it is to be saved. And you have this deep, deep sense of satisfaction and peace because you know that you have been forgiven by God. That's our greatest need to be forgiven by God because we're all sinners. The Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is none that does good, not no, not one. So that speaks of you and it speaks of me, but I've given my life to Jesus. And now when God the Father looks at me, he sees Jesus's righteousness. He sees his purity, his goodness, because I'm clothed in Jesus's righteousness. I'm abiding in him. Would you like to be a Christian? Would you like to give your life to Jesus Christ to be born again? You would be inviting him into your life to be your Lord and your Savior. If you'd like to do that, you can say this simple prayer right after me, my friend. You're just going to repeat these words. You would be praying to God, not me, not anybody else. Just stop what you're doing. Open up your heart and come before the Lord. With all of your sins, all of your problems, you come before him and he will clean you up. Would you like to do that? All right, we'll repeat this prayer after me. Here we go. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I am sorry for my sin. I turn from my sin 
Please help me to do that. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe that in three days he was raised from the dead and that he's alive today. And I choose to follow Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior from this day forward. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my friend. If you did that, all of heaven rejoices over one, if that's you, one who has turned from their sinful, evil ways and has chosen to follow Jesus and he has chosen you. Isn't that amazing? You will belong to him. You're one of his children now, born again to his kingdom. Congratulations, my friend. Hey, don't forget to get involved in a church, a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. Um, Get in a small fellowship. You need fellowship with other believers and you need to pray every day. And God bless you. Hey, don't forget to hit that playlist right there, Jesus in the Old Testament. You won't miss any of that stuff. And hit that subscribe button. That'll help you get all the, hit the bell. You'll get all the episodes. I love you.